Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you'd like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. I'm gonna need some caffeine for this one. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So this video, I feel like it's gonna be like a little bit of a divergence from some of the normal content that I make. Uh, it's still plant related, but it's more based. Let's sit down and kind of chat and verbally process some things that I think will be relevant and applicable to you guys, but also is reflective of kind of some of the things that I've been feeling recently. For the last maybe month or so, I have been like feeling something weird in regards to plants. <laughs> And I've been trying to figure out what exactly it is. I have kind of a suspicious feeling that it might be plant burnout, which is a little bit self-explanatory, but if you don't really know what that means, basically I just, when I think about taking care of my plants, I just feel exhausted and a little bit overwhelmed. And you know, I haven't really felt that way towards my plant collection a whole lot. Uh, I think the most recent time that I've really felt that way was when I was pregnant with my son and I had a lot of morning sickness. And so I really honestly like couldn't do anything. I was burnt out on literally everything in my life. But yeah, lately, like I've had spurts of energy where I was really motivated to take care of my plants. But more recently, I've definitely felt more daunted and overwhelmed than anything. And it's not that I don't like my plants because I still really, really love them. But number one, I haven't been quite as like, I was going to say titillated. I feel like that's too extreme of a word. I haven't been quite as excited by my plants as I normally am or like inspired and motivated to take care of them. It's felt a little bit more like a chore. And number two, I think I've also just felt really claustrophobic. Like I have too many plants crammed into too many places and I haven't been able to keep up with them in the way that I would like to. And normally I'm super on top of watering my plants and that sort of thing. But recently like more and more I've been like feeling like I'm behind on watering them. I'm, I'm behind on my plant care. And also plants are not where I want them to be. And I feel like I'm running out of space because it's like I've been propagating and I have like a lot of propagations going. And I also have plants that are growing and kind of outgrowing the spaces where I put them. Or I feel like they're not growing well because they're not in the right place. You know what I mean? So I've been feeling a lot of this and I've been trying to identify what it is and like why I've been feeling this way. And I think that there's a few factors. Part of it is that I have been very engaged in some of my other hobbies recently. So I started learning how to crochet. I have been reading a lot more, which has been fantastic because I really missed reading. That was a, a big hobby and part of my identity that I kind of dropped off of doing for a while, but now I'm really back on it. I've read at least 10 books in the last two months. So and by the time this video goes up, it'll probably be like 12 books at the rate that I'm going, honestly. So like, I've been really loving that and getting excited about that. And with books usually comes for me, um, drawing. I like to draw like fan art of, of the books that I'm reading, especially if I'm really into them. So more drawing and also I tend to get inspired to write again. And if you don't know, I was actually a creative writing major in college and I love writing, but I kind of got burnt out on writing. So I kind of slowed down on that, but now I'm starting to feel inspired to write. Yeah, so because of that, like I think other hobbies are kind of consuming some of my free time and I've been more excited about those than I have been about plants, at least starting like basically in 2024. The other factor that I think might even be even more significant than me kind of like gravitating towards some other hobbies, because as an aside, I think that that's completely normal to kind of have like, you know, there's some oscillation between different hobbies that you enjoy. And during certain seasons, you just enjoy some of them more than others. And it's kind of hard to maintain them all at the same capacity all the time. And obviously when you have a lot of plants to take care of, like, I don't want to just like let them die off. So I still have to be taking care of them. But then eventually if I'm not taking care of them to the same degree, and obviously I have a lot of plants, I don't know. Sometimes you can just feel like you get behind because I'm paying attention to some other hobbies a little bit more. The other thing, I lost my train of thought. I should have written down more notes for this because I'm honestly verbally processing. We are rambling today. I need to like sort this out for myself. And I thought it might be interesting to bring you guys in on the conversation is kind of what I'm trying to do. Okay. Oh yes. So the hobby thing is one factor and it is normal to have hobbies that oscillate. That's kind of like a summary 
of that point. The other factor that I've noticed with plant burnout for me personally is, so I get anxious when things are not all where they ought to be or when things start feeling overwhelmingly crammed. Like it's overstimulating to me to have like all of my plants crammed together and not feel like they're clean and orderly, if that makes sense. And more and more often I've had plants outgrow spaces or be in like a limbo in terms of where they're placed and they're not like styled in the way that I want them to be. And honestly, like, I, I hate to say it, but I think I have too many plants, which is unfortunate because there's a lot more plants that I would love to have. I need another sip of coffee. And I honestly hate saying it out loud. I hate saying that I have too many plants because frankly, I don't really want to get rid of any. Or at least, I mean, I love a lot of the plants that I have and there are a lot of other plants out there that I would absolutely love to try. But at least the way that things are set up right now in this space, I think I have too many plants. And the most overwhelming thing to me is just that like they keep growing, they like outgrow their spot. So I'm trying to figure out a game plan and kind of verbally process like what to do when you have too many plants. And for me, like, what do I do when you have too many plants or what I perceive to be too many plants? Now that that's obviously kind of twofold. It could be you have too many plants because you can't take care of them all, which is like a little bit of an element for me, at least in this season where I'm focusing on other hobbies. I think normally, like in my normal pace and my normal enjoyment of plants, I'm honestly fine and could probably take care of more plants than what I have. So I don't think that it's necessarily a, I have too many, plants because I can't take care of them all because I don't have time or energy to like that's not as much of my too many plants problem um it's more so I have too many plants because like it just physically I don't have enough like good spaces for my plants to all be and like also look nice and have their care requirements met and won't outgrow within a few months <laughs> because frankly a lot of this comes down to like with my greenhouse cabinet it's busting at the seams. Like it's just way too full and I'm gonna need to pull some plants out, but then I don't really know where to put those plants now that have outgrown the cabinet. Like that is very overwhelming to me to like handle and think about and maybe other people handle it better and have a better system in place, but I just don't. <laughs> but okay, okay, as I'm verbally processing all of this, again, the, the main question is for me, like, kind of two questions like how do you handle plant burnout but then also primarily like what do you do when you have too many plants what do you do when you feel like you don't have enough space for all of those plants and i'm so sorry if i'm like all over the place repeating myself again this is a verbally processing video we are having a conversation with that note i mean if you want to leave your thoughts in the comments please i would love to hear like if you have solutions if you want to commiserate with me all of the above. Okay, I, I, I kind of have like some steps broken down and maybe they might seem obvious, but if we're trying to enter some solution mode and brainstorm, like what do you do when you feel like you have too many plants? I mean, the first thing probably has to be just stop buying plants, accept that as your fate, accept your collection as it is and admire other people's plants at a distance. Like you don't need to buy every single plant type deal. And that's where I've actually observed a lot of people going on like plant no buys this year and last year. I've seen a lot of people doing that. And part of that is for a financial reason, which makes complete sense. And I feel you there as well. But also part of that is that people have been realizing, hey, you cannot keep buying plants at a pace of like five plants a month because you're you will quickly get overwhelmed you will quickly like your space will just get taken over by plants and that's where for me i really think that i need to adopt maybe not a no buy because i don't want to like be super strict about it but probably you know reduce my pace and i and i have already kind of done this where it's like okay maybe i'll just get like one plant in a month or I'm not even buying any new plants in a single month. That would be challenging, but probably a good idea. Pump the brakes. Don't introduce more plants into your collection until I'd say the second step is you could actually actively like get rid of plants. You can purge your collection, curate your collection. I think that's something that I really want to prioritize this year. You know, really focusing on like the aesthetics of each plant and like making it grow the way that I want it to grow and like in the pot that I want it to be and all that sort of thing and knowing exactly where I want it to be and knowing just really identifying, okay, which plants do I even like growing? Which plants actually frustrate the heck out of me? Which plants would be better off in somebody else's collection, you know? And, and sometimes 
you know, that might be you let a plant die or you get rid of it if it's like already just sickly or not doing well. I personally don't have issues with that. I know some people have issues with like throwing away plants. Um, for me, it just kind of depends on <laughs> what kind of plant it is, what kind of condition it's in, because like I personally wouldn't want to give like a root rotted plant to a friend unless they explicitly were like, hey, I want to rehab a plant. I love just giving plants to friends of mine, like local friends, people that I know. It is easier to do that in terms of mental load and mental space. One idea that I, I had in terms of how to go about purging your plants and curating your collection, honestly, make a list of every single plant in your collection. Like if you're a spreadsheet person, I think that you would probably really enjoy this. And then actually, rank them. Maybe you could go by tiers to make it a little bit easier. So go S, A, B, C, so on and so forth. And then like the bottom tier, like your F tier and D tier plants, maybe those are the plants that you get rid of. You get rid of all of them. Just say goodbye. Um, and maybe that would be three plants. Maybe that would be 15 plants. But if they're not bringing you any sort of joy or you actively dislike them, like why are you keeping them? Either throw them out or give them to a friend or if you wanna sell them and wanna go through the energy of selling or shipping, like that's your prerogative. Another really cool option is you could find a place where you could just set up a table and leave out plants and be like, hey, this is free. My local library actually has like a little plant section where you can bring in plants and it's supposed to be like a take a plant, leave a plant type of deal, but I have brought in like five plants and just set them on their little table and didn't take anything. But the last idea that I actually had, and this is a method that I might eventually adopt, make room for more plants. Maybe that's not as healthy, but okay, listen, especially if your problem is more of like a physical space thing, like feeling like you don't have enough planty spaces to hold all the plants that you want to have, but you're like fine with the care. It's more of a capacity issue, like a physical capacity issue. There are creative ways to like make room for more plants. And obviously you know your space best, but I personally know in my home, there are definitely some opportunities. Uh, if I can like persuade my husband to be on board, which he is very supportive. So I think that he would be. I have been going back and forth. I've been thinking about getting like another greenhouse cabinet, especially because Ikea lowered the price of the Redsta wide cabinets. And that's like my favorite Ikea greenhouse cabinet of all of them. I would have to like make room for it specifically, but I think that I definitely could. I, I could like move some things around in my house. I could make room for it. And I have ideas of different possible places where I could put it. So like, I'm not completely out of space, especially if I were to like add grow lights, if I were to add a cabinet, if I were to move some things around, like there are things that you can do to add more space and places for plants. Sometimes you just have to get a little bit creative, especially if you've taken up like all of the window space in your home, that's where you move on to grow lights um, and like create almost like specific plant displays in your home so that they're not all just like sitting everywhere, wherever you can squeeze them, but it's like you've specifically curated it. You've specifically created a display. I don't know, some current ideas that I have I think I might want to like add curtain rods to the windows in my kitchen and add some hanging plants off of the curtain rod. So rather than like having curtains in my kitchen, it's just like a curtain rod and then plants hanging off of it with hooks. And like, I have a lot of macrame hangers in my home. So for me personally, that's something that I'm really considering doing to kind of make more spaces for plants that are intentional. Like for me, that is the key word. I am less likely to feel overwhelmed by my plants if they are all placed intentionally and not, you know, <laughs> this has happened to me a couple of times this week and I felt so awful where like a smaller plant was put behind a bigger plant and I just completely forgot about the smaller plant and so like it was really underwatered. Thankfully not dead, but that can happen, you know, if you just, plants aren't positioned intentionally enough and then it feels like it's a mess, it feels like it's completely overwhelming. So. For me, I know, just knowing myself, feeling like I don't have enough room for more plants or the plants that I actually want to have. And that there are certain plants in my collection where I'm like, I could definitely do without you and I'd rather have a different plant. Or like, these plants are not like in the right places and it doesn't look nice and it's really overwhelming or like I lose track of them. Honestly, like intentional placement and creating those planty spaces, I think are really, really key to reducing that feeling of overwhelm a lot. Like, <laughs> I think that that's gonna, that will help me so much. I don't think that I'm gonna go on 
a complete plant ban, but I do think that I need to step back and evaluate maybe do a pretty big purge of plants. Ironically, I did buy a plant like two weeks ago and there's gonna be a video that comes out after this video in which I unbox it. So like with the exception of that plant, I might try to take a break. Tentatively, I'm at least going to try to reduce how much I'm buying new plants and bringing new plants into my home, at least until I get rid of some and potentially create another planty space in my home, which I know, again, I like just did that, but I filled it up with plants very quickly that had just been like sitting around in random places in my house. But honestly, on the topic of creating new planty spaces and especially with being creative about it, I would love to hear from you what have been some like creative things that you've done to create more space for your plants. I'm also curious if any of you guys moved and like purchased a house or like gone to an apartment specifically like with plants in mind. Not that you like only moved to make more room for plants, although if you did, no judgment, but that when you were buying a house, you were specifically paying attention to how many windows there were and like the window directions and if there would be good places to put your plants and cabinets. I don't know, I'm really curious. I hope that this video turns out at least somewhat coherent, but I would say in summary, I've been feeling some plant burnout and overwhelm primarily because I feel like I don't have enough room for my plants because I feel like they're outgrowing their spaces and I don't have good spots for all of them, which in turn perpetuates that feeling of, oh my gosh, like I'm super anxious about taking care of my plants and I keep on forgetting about them because I want to avoid the problem by engaging in other hobbies. <laughs> and so three possible solutions are just stop buying plants and curate your plant collection by getting rid of other plants and then also make room for the plants that you actually do want to have so that they all have intentional spots in your house. I feel like I lost track of what person I was using in those sentences. But hopefully that's a good summary of kind of what I'm talking about because again, I we went on all sorts of tangents. This was a whole verbal journey that we took together, but <laughs> I hope that you understood. I hope that, I mean, I don't want you to be feeling what I'm feeling because like I wouldn't want to wish this on anyone because I don't think it's like a necessarily super positive thing. But also like I hope that if you are feeling this way, you don't feel so alone and we can be in it together and be feeling these feelings and processing them together. That's my hope. I think that's all I have to say. So I'm going to turn off my camera before I ramble any further and make this video longer than it needs to be because it probably already is. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that we were able to kind of relate with each other. Again, let me know where you're at in the comments. And I truly hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.